We've already talked about packages in a previous video, but in this video, we're gonna see how we can actually create those inside of IntelliJ and explore interactively how packages behave. And we'll also, on the side, talk about jar files briefly. So as we saw before, there exists something in Java known as a package, which is distinct from a project, that thing we did in the previous little clip. So a package is a Java syntax idea, and it addresses the fact that multiple classes might have the same name. There might be a dog class used by me. There might be a dog class used by, I don't know, Franklin L. Bean, who runs some company somewhere, right? And so to deal with the fact that me and Franklin Bean might come up with the same name for a class, we use this idea of a namespace, that any package or any class I write should be associated with some kind of package, some kind of a name, an extra part of the name. So to do that, uh, what we do is rather than renaming the class something like Josh Hug Dog or something, I will instead at the top of my file, I'll say package ug.joshh.animal. And what that says is that this package is named ug.joshh.animal and the dog class belongs to it. Uh, and so this convention, as I mentioned in an earlier video, refers to the website address. So the org.junit package, so org.junit org refers to a package called org.junit and it also refers to the website junit.org. In this case, they have a single package that goes with this website, so they didn't call it like org.junit.testing stuff. Whereas in my case, maybe I have multiple packages at my website, joshh.ug. So the package in this case, uh, full name is ug.joshh.animal, capturing both the website and the special thing that I'm building. Okay. Uh, so that's nothing new, but what's gonna happen in a moment is we'll see how this works in IntelliJ. Now, as a reminder, whenever we actually uh, create a package, then whenever we wanna use a class in that package, we have to either use the entire canonical name or we can use the import statement where we can just use the simple name, which will be just dog. And we'll, we'll do that in a moment. Okay, uh, so there's two steps to creating a package. The first step is to put the package name at the top with a package declaration, just like this. And then the second thing to do is to make sure that the file is stored in a folder with the appropriate folder name. Now there's a rule in Java that the Java interpreter uses and the Java compiler uses to find the files at once. So if there's a file that has package name ug.joshh.animal, it needs to be in a folder where we just replace each of these dots with a slash. So it needs to be in a folder ug slash joshh slash animal. In other words, there's a folder named animal inside of a folder named joshh inside of a folder named ug. Now we could do that manually from our computer, but I'll show you first how we can do it in IntelliJ. So to do this, I'm gonna say file new package. So let's go into IntelliJ and I go up here and I'll say file new, uh, where's, there it is, package. And we'll call this package ug.joshh.animal. So that has created here this little funny folder thing here. Uh, and if actually, if I go to show and explore, I can see that there's now a folder called uh, ug, inside of that is josh h, inside of that is animal, and nothing is currently in the package. Uh, and so if I want to actually create a class inside this package, I'll right click on the package name and say new Java class, and we'll maybe call this dog. So this automatically puts a declaration at the top, and we'll see that the dog Java file is inside of this package. And what that means in terms of our computer, if we actually go here, we'll see that in this folder, okay, again, we'll go up, inside of ug slash josh h slash animal, we now have dog. And we can open it up in Sublime and see that nothing special is happening here. So um, at that point, we have now added a file uh, known as dog to our ug.joshh.animal package. And here's all the slide versions of just the same thing. Okay. Uh, so what we've just done then, right, is we've just done those two steps I mentioned earlier. I said there's two steps to creating a package. Okay. Uh, the first is putting the package name at the top. And the second is making sure it's in the right folder. So by doing those steps in IntelliJ, we have done exactly these things. And again, we could have done them manually. I could have manually gone in here and said, uh, new folder, ugh, and so forth, and just repeat it over and over, but I saved myself some time by using IntelliJ instead. Now, how do we use packages? Well, as we saw in a previous lecture, as, and as I said a little bit ago, if we have a class in one package and, when we want, and we want to use it in another package, we can use the canonical name. And the canonical name refers to the entire uh, name of the class, including its package name. And so in dog launcher, which is not part of the package, notice uh, I could say ug.joshh, or sorry, if I say dog d equals new dog, it won't work. But if I say ug.joshh.animal.dog, then what the IntelliJ compiler will do is it'll say, okay, 
in this folder, right? Let's think about it from the Java compiler's perspective. It says, in this folder, is there an ug slash josh h slash animal slash dog? Yes, yes, there is. Uh, so everything's set up here nice and beautifully. Uh, and so now we can use the ug.joshh.animal.dog class from dog launcher. Uh, we can also use an import statement. And in that case, we can just use the simple name instead. So if I go back to uh, our dog launcher and I say import ug.joshh.animal.dog, now I no longer need to say this entire canonical name, and I can just say dog. Okay? And Java automatically knows that the dog I'm referring to is this dog, because I imported it. Now, as I mentioned again in a previous lecture, unlike a language like Python, where an import is necessary to use code that's outside of the current uh, context, that is to use something that's from another package, you don't have to do it in Java. Uh, in Java, the import statement is just a syntactical convenience as opposed to unlocking new capabilities. Uh, now, an important note is that a class where you don't actually put a package name, which is almost all the code you've written in this class, it is called, or it's said to be part of the so-called default package. Uh, there is a nice post on Stack Overflow uh, where someone just simply puts it this way. You should avoid using the default package except for very small example programs. And I agree. Uh, things like our homework one, or sorry, our project 1A, project 1B, those really should have been part of a package, but I didn't want to layer even more syntax on you. But from this point on, as we're working on our programs, we're going to have everything be part of a package. Uh, so in other words, whenever you write programs, from now on, you should always have some kind of package declaration up top. I guess if you're writing tiny little uh, example code, you can avoid it for some, but there's no reason not to have part of a package. It makes It's easy to do in Java. Okay. Uh, so the idea here is, again, just to ensure that we don't have two classes with the same name, that we always know exactly what we're getting. In other words, we're being explicit rather than implicit. Now, there's one little note here, which is that you cannot import code from the default package. So in other words, if I'm in the dog class, there's no way I could call dog launcher main. If I try and do this, it doesn't know what dog launcher is. I can't do something like default dot dog launcher. That does not work. So in other words, there's literally no way that the dog class could ever get a hold of anything in the dog launcher class because it's part of the default package. And that's just one thing to keep in mind. And that's an additional reason why you should avoid using the default package except for very small example programs. So the last little thing I wanna say about packages is that um, if you realize that you have created a class that's not part of a package, then you simply need to do two things. One is add the name of the package using a package declaration to the top of the file. Uh, so let me do that. Let's say I want to make dog launcher part of this class. Maybe I've just decided it seems like a dog launcher should be part of this animal package. Uh, then I'll say package ug.joshh.animal. Now at this point, uh, this is fine, but it says I don't understand. The package name does not correspond to the file path. In other words, on my computer, dog launcher is here, but it's supposed to be an ug slash joshh slash animal. So I could move it manually. All right, I could do this and like keep repeating that and move it into the appropriate folder. Uh, but I can actually also do it in IntelliJ by simply dragging it into this package. I click a refactor and now everything's fine. Everybody compiles happily. Uh, and if we now look at the UG, uh, this folder, it's gone. The dog launcher is gone. But if we go into UG slash Josh H slash animal, we see dog launcher is happily waiting there for us. Uh, so IntelliJ again makes it easier for us. Uh, so in this next little clip, I'm going to talk about jar files, but I'll pause here uh, for you to reflect or maybe mess around on your own.